this week. I was, I've just about finished the blueprint book. Oh, oh excellent. I'm, I'm, I've, I've finished it too. So. Would you recommend I, it? I, 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 oh, I'd highly recommend it. Highly recommend it. I, I think it sort of pulls together um, a whole lot of uh, different uh, you know, thoughts that have, had a bit, that have been going around for a while now. You know, uh, I guess you know, individually, none of these, or not few, not, not all of these ideas are sort of new to me, but they've sort of been put together in a, in a, in a I guess, a more organized pattern by, by obviously someone who knows what they're doing. Um, and I think it's presented the, the whole concept of you know, group theory um, you know, and, and uh, you know, the, the evolution of groups. And, you know, I think it's put it very well. I would certainly you know, highly recommend it. But well, what's your, what did you feel about it? Well, again, I, it wasn't, there wasn't much that I hadn't come across previously. Um, mm -hmm. And he, he, so I wasn't, I wasn't quite sure of whether this is a radical hypothesis. I mean, it, it, it's, um, as you say, he's, he, he's brought together a lot of the background information um, and a lot of the research on group evolution. Uh, but I wasn't um, sort of surprised by anything. I wasn't, I didn't think there was anything in there that um, made me think differently there was there were a couple of bits. Did you read um, Humankind, the, the book? That no, I, no, I haven't watched it. Yet. Well, no, I you, you should you should read that one because it covers similar ground, but there is a more radical hypothesis, mm -hmm. and they both talk about similar uh, psychological uh, group experiments. Mm -hmm. So in in the blueprint, there I can't remember the name of the the experiment, but it was it's set in North America, and I think it's sort of in the eighties, and they took a group of adolescent boys, split them into two groups. Oh and, yes, yes, yeah. and made that, that was them a good. Mm. Well, both that that experiment is quite a famous one, and that I'd come across it before. And it's talked about in Humankind. And the guy who wrote Humankind found out a lot about how it was set up. So he went back and talked to some of the participants and looked at the, the records. And the it, he, it find, he, find, he found out that, in fact, the two sets of boys took an awful lot of manipulating in order to be aggressive towards each other. Mm -hmm. they, were, they were manipulated by the experimenters. Yeah. And, if, and, and the fact that they, they all came together at the end wasn't a surprise to the boys because that's the way they'd felt most of the way through. Mm -hmm. So it was the way it has been presented as, a, as a, an experiment is, is to uh, suggest that, that there is this sort of underlying animosity between small groups. And this, the guy who wrote um, Humankind, his hypothesis was that wasn't true. And, and so he looked at all of all the experiments where his hypothesis was was wrong, and to see if it was indeed wrong or whether there was something else in the experiments. And he he, he found this in quite a lot of the experiments that where it seen um, it was a sort of to promote the um, the careers of the people who were. And who were doing the experiments yeah. as the as as psychologists, mm -hmm. and because this type of um, psychological experiment would make the newspapers and would you know, make them famous, and <laughs> it turns out there's quite a lot of that was going on in the yeah. past. Oh yes, 
and I, I'm, but that wasn't mentioned in Blueprint. And Blueprint was just sort of taking it as, mm -hmm. well, that, you know, this is the evidence and this is how it was mm -hmm. presented. So I'm, I was slightly less um, uh, persuaded because I thought, well, if, 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 if you're just taking on face value the results of experiments which seem to support your position, then mm -hmm. it's sort of less... Yes. I'm less um, sort of convinced, but I, I, yeah. I'm fully convinced by the overall argument that there is a suite of um, uh, evolved uh, elements that make up the, 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 the fact that we're social beings. And that is mm. also in humankind. Um, it's the same premise. It's just that he, in humankind, he, he touches, or he, his hypothesis is that we change dramatically from hunter-gatherers to um, the uh, agrarian um, uh, civilizations. And uh, who says it happens dramatically? That's in humankind. He's, he, his mm. premise is that the civilizations that were formed after we stopped being hunter-gatherers have uh, dramatically changed our behavior against the underlying evolved behaviors. Mm -hmm. And that's why I think it's a more interesting book because it, it's putting up a much more radical, for me, like a more radical um, idea mm. something where uh -huh. i had come across it once before and i was trying to think of the book that i'd read it in um, and i was a bit dismissive of it when I, because it wasn't a scientific it was a much more of a well is this sort of generally to do with the movement from from hunter gatherer to agricultural um modes of production or, or agricultural um, settlement it's, no it's to do with um it's to do with groups and it's to do with the change from a more social and amenable, and I suppose not democratic doesn't it doesn't make sort of sense in those terms, but a, mm -hmm. because there's obviously no voting going on, but a more shared uh, social grouping than when we became uh, settled, mm -hmm. because after not too long of becoming settled, the hierarchical um, nature of groups changed. So mm -hmm. from being a more uh, general sharing democratic setup, we had um, uh, hierarchies. And th that led quite quickly to um, a position where you would have one or a small group of very strong, very powerful leaders, uh, in fact, sort of godlike uh, mm -hmm. leaders. So you would then have kings, emperors, gods, whatever, who were uh, all powerful, and all, and then a mass of people who were working a lot of the time and a lot of their effort was going to one individual or a group, one small group of individuals. And that didn't happen previously in, in hunter gatherer groups. Mm -hmm. It just didn't just because they the system was not built for that. So you had several million years of hunter gatherers and then you had, you've had, we've had sort of 10,000 years of a change in the social structures from mm -hmm. a shared flat-ish grouping to a much more uh, vertical uh, triangular sort of hierarchy. Mm -hmm. But he said what's happened is that the, the underpinning, uh, the underpinning um, uh, genetics um, are still there but they mm -hmm. have been uh, suppressed by mm -hmm. the nature of our civilization. So that, that's his hypothesis. Mm -hmm. and, and 
So when he finds things which disprove that, like sort of our underlying nature is actually quite to be quite aggressive and to um, to not be cooperative and not be share not sharing things. Those are the things which he knew that he would have to look at because they that they're the ones where they are opposite to the to what he's saying. So he's he's done a lot more research into the the nature of previous research. And that was one of the most mm -hmm. interesting things about the book, um, other mm -hmm. than the underlying uh, theory, is that we, and I was thinking about this, a lot of the way that I think, that, that, I, that I think I know about things is because of a lot of the psychological research that was done from the sort of 60s onwards. Mm -hmm. And what he's saying is a lot of that was done, um, wasn't good science. It was done in order to promote the scientists who were doing it. And they, yeah. they, they, it was to get results that they wanted because they knew that those results would promote their careers. That, and that was uh, that's, similar, similar to the Milgram experiment. Do you remember the Milgram experiment? Which one was that? Where, where they gave um, electric shocks in, the, in an experimental. Ah, it's, um, yeah, that one was talked about. Yeah, that one's talked about an awful lot. Yeah, that that was that's one of the big ones that he yes. um, that he goes into. Yeah, another big one is one uh, uh, with uh, I think it was in Stanford. I think it was uh, pr prisoners and prison guards. Yeah, uh, I yeah. don't know whether that one. Was yeah. Oh, yeah. That's, one, that's, which was... I guess a whole chapter, I think, for, because of, <laughs> and again he talks about, but. You should read it. It's very interesting because it, mm -hmm. I've already ordered it. Yes. <laughs> oh, great. Well, you, it, it, you'll find it. I think very interesting, um, because it it does it does question a lot of uh, the um, the background to those experiments and to how they were. Mm -hmm. But I, I I was just thinking it's, it is that they have become quite. Um, um, part of our culture really they, 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 mm -hmm. the things that sort of come up in conversation that you think oh well yeah well that's the sort that's the sort of people we are because of this and in fact mm -hmm. if those experiments um are not right if they were set up that's right it, it sort of does undermine quite a lot of um how mm -hmm. we think yeah it's a pity that bad science wasn't uh you know a criminal act yeah, indeed. <laughs> well, even now, I mean, it really ought to be. Oh, I mean, yeah. It's, uh, um, yeah. Actually, uh, speak, uh, thinking about that uh, that transition from that you know most societies made from uh, hunter gatherer to uh, to agricultural type of systems. I think there's another book uh, called Against the Grain about uh, the about, by James C. Scott. Is a fairly famous um, author, um, and uh, I think you know that that's I think really gives the, the best explanation of you know, how 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 the movement occurred, how the and 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 essentially I mean what what its, its principal thesis is about grains and about how grains. You know, but quite potentially domesticated humans. Uh, you know, it, it wasn't just a case of humans thinking that they, that they had domesticated various species, but the, the species themselves changing and evolving in order to domesticate and and, and be uh, propagated by by another species. So, you know, he does explore this sort of you know, you know slightly speculative. Um, uh, uh, turning of the tables on on the issue of domestication and, and the rise of the of the grain economies and the gra the grain settlements. Right, I, I I think I remember reading about it. I haven't read the book, but I'll... it's called Against the Grain: A yeah, Deep History got... of the Early States. Yeah, well, I'll. I'll... 
that might, I'm, I've got, I have another one to read in the meantime, but I've got to yeah. I'll, I'll put it on the list. Yeah. Um, because there's uh, one of the, yeah, it's, it's in um, uh, Humankind, is that, I think I mentioned this before, that his, his, his premise is that as hunter-gatherers, um, we did a, uh, a, a self-selection um, through evolution of those people who were um, had qualities which we think of as being uh, communable, uh, uh, that are um, pleasant, we can be interactive with, um, that we can be sociable with. And he said it's in the same way that we have deliberately evolved dogs um, to be those uh, the, we bred dogs into being uh, a species which is um, amenable to uh, being with humans and mm -hmm. and he said what we've done is we've done the same thing but but not as a deliberate act um, with our own species so the reason we are sociable is that we bred ourselves to be sociable. Mm, yeah. It's um, part of cultural evolution. Um, well, it's not just well, it's cultural. cultural evolution influencing genetic evolution. Yeah, yes, There's, yes, it's this, it's a sort of um, some sort, it's a sort of bilateral um, yeah. uh, evolution. So that those the, the traits that are, yeah, that make us, that we find most valuable, we have managed to um, evolve. And, and uh, it's, it's, it's quite a convincing um, um, argument, whether it's right or not. Mm -hmm. But it, it's a certainly, and, and this made me think about the, 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 the Dharmic aspects of, this is what the, that was the point about the mm -hmm. essay that I wrote on the secular yeah. dharma side which which was that if rather than to trying to achieve a dharma what what's actually we should be doing is thinking more about what it is our underlying nature is and maybe that is uh what we should be trying to to find rather than find something that's sort of um, out there it, maybe it's not out there. Maybe it's it's already inside us. It's just that the mm -hmm. um, culture and civilizations have put on us a variety of filters, and that's the way that we see life now. I, I, and I I just thought it was quite interesting, and and it it was it would, does make a make us have a sort of slight shift in the way that you or I look at Dharma at. Mm -hmm. um, because well, that's sort of kind of the way I, I, I've been looking at it, but, but perhaps uh, um, just on, on the question of you know trying to get back to you know a basic nature. Um, but, I mean, I, I've sort of been thinking in terms of you know multiple natures. I mean, to sort of say that you know everybody has a you know a completely altruistic nature. Of course, we know that to be false, but we know that some people are more altruistic than others. Uh, we also know that there are you know, um, people, men in particular, who, who are extremely aggressive and disruptive. Um, that is a known fact. That's why we put lots of them in prison. And 95% of the prison population is men. There's a reason for that. Uh, so there's just not, no, I'm not saying there's a duality. I'm saying that there could be multiple types of basic natures, which not all of which we might consider to be good or for the good of uh, the species. Yeah, I, I, I suppose what I'd be saying then is, is that the reason we put a lot of people in prison is because of the nature of our culture of civilization. It's not that that is the nature of how we are, Mm -hmm. It's that is 
how we are within this society. If our society were different, we wouldn't have um, we young men generally wouldn't be um, as aggressive and they wouldn't be as antisocial mm -hmm. and they wouldn't need yeah. to be put in prison. It's the it's the society which creates that situation. Yes. So um, it's not necessarily the case that we can say that a large groups of young men are antisocial and need to be put in prison. What we can say is there's a large group of young men who are antisocial and need to be put in prison in our society. Mm -hmm. And that's yeah. different. And and I think that's that is the that's the point about the the, the the hypothesis is that there's a lot that we have created that we think is natural the way things are, but is in fact not natural because it's to do with civilization. It's to do with the way that we exist. And and I I, I you know I and I also think it's quite interesting that we are moving back towards a situation where there is a, a more flat hierarchy, flattering, I don't know what the word would be, oh, but a less, okay. not flat earth, no, <laughs> less, less of a hierarchical um, yeah. uh, system. Well, that's what the nature of democracy is after all. Mm -hmm. is. So, you, so we moved from the system of all power invested in one individual, a small group of individuals, the all ultimate power, uh, not only political power, but not only wealth, but religious power. I mean, everything invested in one person, mm -hmm. as in a, a, in a pharaoh, uh, to a situation where we've gone through kings and families being in power, to, to a, a system where we're having, we're trying to have um, everybody have a say in power. Now we've certainly not got there yet, but it's there is a clear progression towards that, mm -hmm. and maybe the reason for that is because that's how we we are evolved to be. Mm -hmm. I mean, maybe we're actually trying to get back to the way that we were before we invented civilization. Yeah, I think that's that, that may be true. I mean, that there's uh, uh, amongst people. You know, there, there's a sort of a willingness to, to try and cooperate if it's possible. I think that's, uh, you know, an automatic nature. Um, if it hasn't, hasn't been sort of reactively turned negative by some other, other factor. Uh, but, you know, as I've you know, already spoken about, you know, uh, the concept of Mushawara in Java, the, the concept of uh, Gotong Royong, and, and, and which is essentially a system of consensus. Um, you know, it, it's certainly not an, an instant method, but it's, a, it's sort of a, a process of, of, of gaining consensus for a particular view or a particular decision or, or whatever. So it's, it's certainly, you know, we know it to be there within human nature. Uh, we also know that uh, perhaps altruistic people are easily manipulated perhaps, uh, but by, by forces that perhaps are, are not quite so benevolent. Uh, and those people all, also exist within our, our, our gene pool. Undoubtedly, it's, it's the, the <clears throat> yeah, I mean, I, I, I just think that there seems to be evidence that the way that we run our societies that, and we have done for 10,000 years um, is not the only way of doing things and has led to a distortion in the in our underlying nature and mm -hmm. I, it, it seems a plausible um, hypothesis I think so I think so Th there's another quite interesting um, strand of um, thought that sort of relates to this but it perhaps more relates to the nature of the dharma and that's something that i've i came across um and again it was a, i think i've it's a book that i mentioned um called the strange nature of things 
which is about um and it's something that you've you've talked about it's it's about that the brain is not the center of uh, thought it's not the only center of thought and consciousness and then this is a whole body experience um so that when when we feel things we feel that we we feel them in in an embodied way but not only that we we think things in an embodied way which has lots of implications for things like ai because it would suggest that ai couldn't ever think like we think because it doesn't have a body and it wouldn't have an evolved system so if mm -hmm. our yeah. thoughts and our consciousness is related to having a a physical body and that that body reacts to both internal and external influences it means that our thought and consciousness is much more closely associated with existence in the world than it is than it does the, with something just like a brain yeah. like a which could be analogous to a computer so mm -hmm. it's um and and that that's in this book, The Strange Nature of Things. And, that, and in that, the brain is a, um, is a side effect of the development of the body or bodies of, 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 in, in animals, um, which had already had a, a, a nascent thought process and it is then um, amplified by having a brain. And it, so it's, it's, again, it's a very interesting um, a, a concept, very well researched. And I came across it just um, yesterday in an article in New Scientist, which uh, talked about the influence on our thought of uh, two, two things. One was breathing, um, and the other one was heartbeat. And they were done by different scientists, but people who knew each other. And the one on um, on breathing was related to, um, a, a, in an experiment they did, they related it to voluntary actions. And they found that voluntary actions were done always, pretty much 95% sort of on the out breath. So when you breathe out is when you do things voluntarily. Mm. If they were um, things that were non-random and set by the experimenters and you did them when the, at, at, at any time and they weren't, uh, they weren't affected by the breath. But the, the experiment they did was on just pressing a button um, randomly whenever you felt like it so you could just press it and, and they did it and it did it 40 times and it turns out that every time you press the button you did it on your out breath and they asked them well, were you aware that that had any relationship to your breathing and only one person apparently did mm -hmm. so that was quite interesting in that that we even though we think we do things when they crop up, you know, when we decide that we're going to do something. In fact, they're related to our body, to a, a, an aspect of our body, which we're, we are yes. unaware of. And the other one, which was to do with heartbeat, um, was it, for me, was even more interesting. Because this, I haven't read the entire um, scientific article because I had to pay for it. The other one was free, so I read all the way through that one but um it, the 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 premise was or the the the, the experiments that what it what it showed was that um in uh you could see things um that otherwise you would miss if your you had the ability to recognize your own heartbeat this is this was really weird but mm. they they did an experiment with people and they, they just said right um count your own heartbeats and then they rigged them up to whatever 
and so they knew how many heartbeats there were. And some people were very good at estimating the number of heartbeats. Um, so they could actually, they knew how often their heart was beating. And some people couldn't, and there was a variation of people in between. But the people who were able to um, be aware of their own heartbeats, when they were shown things in particular experiments with subtle changes in, um, in, in vision, in the things that they were being shown, they could see those things, whereas other people couldn't. The people who were less aware of their own heartbeat couldn't see them. Mm. So that made me think about meditation and about uh, particularly the type of meditation I do with drawing. Because why is it that in when we go on retreats and things, that after a while we see the world in a in much more vibrant ways. We see things that otherwise we would sort of pass. And we can sit and look at trees and leaves and flowers and things. You now, after two days on a silent retreat, you're thinking the whole, the whole world is like it's extraordinarily vi vibrant. And it presumably then relates to the fact that we've been sitting very quietly uh, in a meditative state and being aware of things like our own breathing and our own heart and beat and our own. Um, because, you know, when you do body scans and things. Mm -hmm. So it, it strikes me that that would make a lot of sense, that if you are more attuned to your whole body processes, that you would then um, be able to have a visual experience which was more heightened than would otherwise be the case. Mm. That's a good illustration. It, it does remind me of, a, of another book that, I, that I've just read, uh, uh, which is called uh, The Biological Mind, How Brain, Body and Environment Collaborate to Make Us Who We Are, uh, which pretty much just yeah, basically suggested all that you suggested through those illustrations. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but, but yeah, I found that particularly useful book as well. Uh, it I, sounds... I think I actually mentioned this book to you when I was talking about. Uh, yeah, well, I think that's it. When you were... embodiment. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So it looks like there are there are a number of strands of uh, scientific inquiry that are that there maybe have got these elements in them that relate mm -hmm. to some dharmic inquiry um, from so. from a sort of philosophical perspective, but also a very um, practical. Um, I mean, maybe we, we should try and pull these together somehow. To make us well, sort of... it's funny, funny you should mention that. <laughs> um, I've just made a, in my personal site, which I'm sort of using as a, as a test bed for a whole lot of ideas, um, I've got my recent reading. Um, uh, but at the moment, it's only from um, audio books, but I was thinking of sort of expanding it to sort of include you know, all other media as well. I'll just show it to you. Uh, can you see that? Um, yeah, what? well, you should be able to see Oh, no, can't you share your screen or is this? Yeah, a... uh, well, it's, it's I, I, get, I know I can't because I'm on, on the PC here. Right. I'm actually doing okay. this on, uh, on the uh, hand phone. Uh, but anyway, I've just based, like, for instance, I've got Blueprint here because I'm sort of just reading it now. These are all in order of, of right. uh, when I've last um, read them. Tools of Titans, another really good book for lots of good reasons. Biological Mind. So, you know, basically putting all my recent reading, you know, so perhaps, and I was sort of thinking it'd be interesting to know and what what other people are reading, because you know people are influenced by what you know, by the number one what what they are reading, uh, but they're particularly sort of you know focused on their most recent reading, sort of and that and sort of knowing you know what somebody else is actually uh, reading or or consuming in terms of you know media content and sort of you know uh, articles or, or 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 books and and long form. Um, uh, you know, work in particular. 
it'd be interesting to know from from you know for instance from yourself or from Alfie or from Julie you know your your the, the latest books you've been you've been reading and perhaps a, a, you know, with a long tail going back years. This list here goes back to probably about ten years, um, and it's not finished by any means. Uh, but but it does give, but it does show a sort of evolution in some ways, uh, which is interesting in itself. Uh, yeah. Um, so how how do we make this um, work? Well, first of all, you spend maybe thirty years becoming a computer programmer, and then <laughs> and then it's easy. Okay. <laughs> Uh, well, actually, it's actually, yeah, it was pretty hard because I couldn't get this information off Audible, for instance, to where, you know, nearly all my audio books are located. So I had to do it all manually because, you know, all these are clickable links that go directly to the, to the, the book itself because uh, uh, I wanted that in there. Uh, and I didn't want to do reviews on every one of them just because that would take forever. So, but I just want one of them to be actually be there so that people can sort of look through and say, okay, that, this is what he's been filling his head with. This is why perhaps he thinks like that or, you know, has this particular view. Um, so, you know, seeing what people are putting into their heads, you know, can be useful in, in seeing their perspectives and perhaps, you know, even getting some new ideas. Or, and also seeing people's evolution. If you've got a, a long enough history, it can be you know, very interesting to do. Um, but to get this list up, I actually had to sort of do all sorts of very, very mucky stuff that I don't think any any normal person would want to do. Uh, yeah, no. So, uh, so uh, yeah. So, what do we do? Because, uh, yeah, like you say, well, I'm, I'm, well, you know, it. it, it's all it's all manual. In that if, if the only other solution is I've actually already already put in a complaint to Audible this one about you know how why can't we download these whole things into a, an XML file so we can display it how we want on our own websites. And they said yes, okay, we'll look at it and we'll get back to you. Yeah, yeah. So <laughs> okay. Yeah, That's not gonna that. happen. <laughs> um, so yeah. But yeah, I, I just you know the, the only other alternative is to do it manually and that's a bit of a pain in the bum. It takes a while. Yeah. But a bit but, you know, very interesting to to, to sort of see that, sort of, you know, see people's lists and, and to, to see what you know, the last things they've been sort of reading and sort of to go down that big long tail and sort of see where they've come from. Mm, but is, is there not some way of, rather than looking at it from individuals and having just individuals lists, having some way of relating um, taking things from various um, sources that seem to have relationships between them. And that, that seems to me something that would be more um, overall beneficial. So that, that you like the, what we've just been talking about, that we've come across themes within books which have relationships, which might have a um, a, a point, a, a reason, a rationale, not a rational, um, a, a driver for uh, thinking about things like the Dharma. Mm -hmm. So that we can say, well, that this, this feeds into it and this source also relates to that. So that we're sort of moving towards a something rather than having lots of sort of separate lists however interesting they are but taking from them to something which is more um you know leads you onto another way of of thinking which might then think focus your reading of, of, around that so if we've got lots of history and we all got lots of history taking the things from those, those histories which are relevant to the question of um, mm -hmm. what is the dharma yeah. Or yep. what is a dharma, well, my dharma. I think that there's a number of uh, different ways of you know, doing that. Uh, but you know, just, just for my own <coughs> individual site here, you know, I've, I've just marked, I mean, I've given books a rating. And, and generally, if it's got a rating of highly recommended then or five, 
then that then that just means you know it it probably relates very strongly to to Dharma. Um, and that's, that's how okay. I sort of handle so that. Could we could you um, take in and then give a reason, or could 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 it be that there are um, categories of how this relates to the Dharma? Um, could it be that it, this relates on a from an evolutionary perspective, let's say. So this is something to do with our underlying nature, or this is something to do with ideas, this is something to do with philosophy, this is, that's why it relates. And if we could have uh, some sort of taxonomy, then it, it means mm -hmm. that you could, other links could link to that. So if you had, yes. if evolution were a category within the taxonomy, so you could say this this chapter in this book is particularly interesting in terms of how that might relate to the evolution of mm -hmm. the dharma then you could say well actually that's also true in in my history i've got something which relates across to that so that you're building links so you could then you could then follow rather than trying to you know, take everything in you could follow a particular strands and I, I think that might be more um, both manageable. Well, I think you know, in a, in a for a, a very at a very simple level, that the, the the easiest way to handle that would be through a system of tagging. Um, All right. Yeah. Uh, that that's probably the, the easiest. The only problem with tagging is that it's a little bit wild and out of control, and you know you'd want to sort of try and keep um, you know, a, a fairly manageable list of, of tags. I mean, just for example, I mean, the, the, the issue of, or, or the, the general area of, of, of uh, human behavioral evolution you know, might well be tagged as biology by some people. Uh, so it's you know, how people categorize things can be sometimes very, very divergent. And very hard to you know, reconcile sometimes, but not impossible. Uh, but, but like I said, I think the simplest way is using a system of tags. Um, that, that's what I've been thinking anyway, in terms of being able to, you know, interconnect uh, multiple different uh, uh, works, for example, with you know some, some sort of categorization, general kind of categorization, uh, and and recommendation. Uh, I think, I think that could be useful. But yeah, I'm just using my, my own side as a test, test site for a, a few little ideas. And uh, it's really a question of how do I datify that, turn it into a data structure that can be exported and imported. So that's sort of a, a long, could be a while off yet. Oh, well, okay. Um, yeah. I'm not sure. I mean, I, uh, tagging seems, I don't know, because I just don't use, I just don't use these things. So I'm not sure. Well, people don't use tags often because they're, they're so diffuse and unorganized, which is, you know, the, both the strength and the weakness of, of, of you know, using tags. But, you know, if you have had sort of a, a curated uh, tag system, uh, then that would sort of put it more into a manageable yeah. frame, and uh, you know, uh, and there would be less of them. There wouldn't sort of be a forest of tags. There'd just be sort of you know just a, a bunch of them that were easier, easier to comprehend and to choose from. Um, so yeah, well, that's that's sort of what I'm thinking is that maybe you could that we could start from that point of view and only have a few categories. And that the were sort of accepted. I don't know who who accepts them, but we can accept. Well, them well, first that's, that's, where, that's, that's where the gatekeeper comes in. Have I spoken about gatekeepers? Yeah, yeah, I, yeah, yeah. So you, but there's some, and you could, but you could have a category, and then you could, which could be a tag, but then you could describe yeah. it. You could, you could define it. Yeah, and things that fit that definition would fit that that tag whatever it is yeah. so that you knew mm -hmm. that there's a there's a resource related to 
to that, which you could then have a, um, a selection of information, a collection of information within that resource. Yeah. But um, I think it's easy enough. Yeah. It's easy enough to get a, a sort of a, you know, a curated uh, uh, you know, standard form of uh, tag uh, group of tags, and with the option that you know, if anybody thinks you know nothing here fits, then putting in their own tag for approval. Absolutely. Yeah. For moderation. So you know, having a sort of a, you know, not inflexible, but not totally you know out of control flexible either. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that would be good. And then we, if that could then ha in some way be linked to these various resources, um, I think that might be very useful because like I say, I mean, I've just been reading about something which has taken my interest. And I think that I can see links between that and something else. Um, and it, it would be nice to say, well, actually, here's something that disproves that. Here's something that is a hypothesis which mm -hmm. says, no, that's wrong. Well, okay, yeah. well, let me read that then. Let me mm -hmm. look at that and see if there's anything here that needs to be um, addressed or, you know, and that would either strengthen or weaken the argument. Mm -hmm. um, but I can't, I don't know of anything. I mean, I suppose things like, you know, you look at things like Tricycle, which are perhaps the most, is the largest resource mm -hmm. for what we're looking at, the things that we're looking at. And they, there's nothing in there that, as far as I know, that I've come across, which looks at the Dharma from the perspectives that we're looking at it, which are broader. They're much broader than the 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 sort of the Buddhist um, standpoint, mm -hmm. because they're bringing in ideas mm -hmm. from um, other other disciplines, which which mm -hmm. I think both of us think are are valid and mm -hmm. and useful. Yeah. So we haven't really got I, I, any. I, I call that sort of what what perhaps what we're doing is sort of upscoping. Uh, I mean, are the limitations of you know. Buddhist oriented groups is that you know they've, they've got their uh, they've got the, their framework and even if they look at, they're completely looking at this at a in a secular way that this it, that framework is the start always the starting point yeah and so it's never scoped sort of a little bit broader to sort of encompass uh, you know not just you know ancient wisdoms and and uh, you know uh, parables of old but also contemporary knowledge. Uh, which is vastly, vastly more um, you know, available now than, than what it was. And, and to, to sort of not learn from, from science is, is, I think, uh, a mistake. Or, I mean, and I'm not sort of you know, trying to say that you know, Tricycle should do that or this particular Buddhist uh, group should do that. That's the framework. That's fair enough. That's what it is. Hmm. And so you know, I'm, I'm not... You know, for sort of you know, trying to force all these Buddhists to sort of see things my way. You know, they've got their framework; they might be comfortable with it. Uh, so, you know, why mess with it? That's yeah. that's sort of one approach. But on the other hand, if you're if you are truly looking for you know what is truly dharmic within the human species, you're going to have to upscope it a bit. You're going to have to look far broader than just just the, the glimpses of dharma that we that we we get. You know, through Gautama and the Stoics and all the rest. Uh, no. Yeah, no, I, I agree uh, uh, entirely. Well, I, I suppose mm. you know that. <laughs> yes. That's why that's why we talk. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah, the only person who agrees with me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, oh, no. No, Elfie. Where is she? Um, yes. But yeah, no, I'd, so really, I suppose it, that's what I would be trying to work towards. Something like mm tricycle but that had the this upscoping not a word that i've yes. come across before the, yes. this broader scope it. right <laughs> well uh, yeah broader <laughs> broader <laughs> yeah. Uh, uh, yeah 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 looking more uh, diversely and i i just mm -hmm. wondered that maybe i know we've talked about this not being a website and stuff but i mean it would be nice if in a way we could we could make a start at having somewhere where I suppose we've done it a bit on the secular Dharma thing, but it, that doesn't seem to be 
you know, the, the secular Dharma site, but it doesn't, the forum, it doesn't seem to be a, a place where um, you can sort of set a structure, you can set, you can add these things like, you now you're putting these books on your site and, and it, but where, I don't know, it'd be, it just sort of, it would be nice if, to try and work towards somewhere where we can make these connections other than just in a video, that's I suppose. Mm -hmm. So you yeah. can sort of peruse or, it. Or make, or make them in addition to a video. Absolutely, yeah, yeah, yes. yeah. So, yeah. So yeah, I mean, I, I certainly am thinking along those lines and, and I, I guess one of my, and I've got a few rants already prepared for this, but uh, I, I won't, uh, inflict them on you now, but, but certainly in terms of, you know, what's available in a blog posting uh, software, and I'm thinking in particular of WordPress, because that's by far the largest, uh, uh, the most dominant. Um, I mean, it's a sensibly open source, but the fact is, if you want it, want it to make, make it do anything decent, you've got to pay for all these extra add-ons. I mean, that's, what WordPress, that's how WordPress makes their money. It's not, not with the, the WordPress software, which is open source and free, but in all the extra stuff you've got to layer on top of it in order to get things to work anywhere, anywhere decently. Um, and, you know, I can, we've seen all these, these problems. They're not, you know, WordPress is not actually a platform. It, it's, a, it's a tech stack. Um, and and you know, you'll you'll see this you know, the stacking happening you know just you know, starting from 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 all the add-ons and and uh, and little bits and pieces you have to pay extra for to to the you know, uh, to the DNS protections to all this the layers of protection you've got all these different tech layers from all sorts of different parties from all over the world and it's it's a it's a dog's breakfast which is one I guess one reason why I'm just so uh, reluctant when it comes to to WordPress, it's just sort of crippled web is what we used to call it, you know, ostensibly free, but but crippled so much that you actually have to pay in order to get it to work. So um, part of you know part of my thinking and working is actually trying to devise far simpler, more direct um, uh, systems. Uh, that that are just far less reliant on all these different layers uh, that sort of you know gets it right back to a uh, to the bare metal of the web uh, where people have control because in WordPress you know you don't have control it's really it doesn't really belong to you you know it, you, you've got all these different I mean, and even then you've got the layers of you know uh, you know you, you know, you know your servers and and, uh, and the domain names and, and all all these other layers. I mean that that's got to be done anyway. Um, but there, there, it's not beyond the possibility that you know, given the right resources, that um, simple uh, blog type um, systems can be set up on people's personal computers and and operate just like a um, um, a web page, but, but it would be actually on your computer, and perhaps you know mirrored off onto onto a onto a public server. So yeah, I'm just thinking in those terms. You know, you know how how do we sort of you know, reclaim the discourse in terms of you know ownership of that discourse? Because at the moment, you know, I think we could say that to a large degree, you know, the, the platforms, you know, Google, Facebook, and all the Amazon and all, all those platforms completely dominate discourse. Um, and, and the tech stacks and the WordPress being probably the most prominent of them, you know, that, that probably has the rest. And then you've got the real web, which has been increasingly sidelined over, over the years. Uh, you know, if you don't interface to, 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 to a real web page from, from a, a social media site, then it just doesn't exist. And, and the platforms are trying to sort of, you know, increasingly trying to sort of keep people within their ecosystem. They don't like people jumping out into the web. And so the web has become sort of, you know, like the third world of, 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 uh, of the internet. 
not, not, not quite yet, but it is heading that way compared to what it was, say, 20 years ago or even 10 years ago. Um, so, yeah, I mean, I'm thinking, still thinking in terms of, you know, ways and means of bypassing the, the uh, you know, centralized domination of the platforms and, and uh, tech stacks and seeing if there's a way of you know, getting back to some basics. Because, uh, you know, doing a blog site is not difficult. It really isn't that difficult. Uh, but it's just made to be incredibly difficult and, and by, you know, by companies who have an interest in, in wanting to sell you something. But that is, that is what they exist for. So anyway, that was, that was probably about 25% of that rant I was talking about before. So. But could, could these two, could we not do two things in parallel? Could we not do this? Um... I think so. I think, I think we've got to, I mean, to sort of you know, just focus on just this one thing as being the thing is, is, a, is a mistake. We've got to do, yeah, various things simultaneously. And, uh, and, uh, um, so and get, getting up the sort of system that I, I'd like to see, I mean, it, that could take a couple of years, realistically. Um, and it would, would require um, a fairly moderate open source project. Um, but you know that, that's all doable. But yeah, at the same time, that doesn't mean we just sort of you know <laughs> don't do anything. But well, that's it. I mean, I I, I don't want to lose the threads that we're we're yes. picking up because I think they're they're interesting yeah. and I think they're valuable. And mm -hmm. um, but I I I can't yet see a way of um, tying them. I mean, that's like you say, you need to go back and look at all the videos that we've been talking about, and then thinking, you know. Well, that was interesting, but then, where? What do we do with it? I mean, why? Why mm -hmm. isn't it possible for us to say, right? Well, there are these books, there are these ideas. They all relate to this theme that's emerging within this, and mm -hmm. we're and we're categorizing it as this. We're calling it this, and we're, this is this is a, a definition. And if there are any other things that fit that definition, then let's have some links to those resources so that we can look at those resources and see how they fit and other people can do the same thing but you mm -hmm. do need some way of um, some form of organization of the information in order to be able mm -hmm. to link um, otherwise uh, not obvious um, sources mm -hmm. to that yeah. There has to be something, there has to be some structure there in order to be able to do that. So we can be as yes. creative as we like, but in order to be creative, you have to have um, an understanding of where the different things are that you can link mm -hmm. together. Yes, yeah. And somewhere to put the results. Yeah. Yes, that's, uh, that, that's uh, yes, I can sort of see that. that that'd be a good place to, to um, yeah, I, I can sort of see that working. You know, I think, or, or at least people more be, being more engaged with, uh, with that sort of um, uh, paradigm. Uh, I, mean, I guess I'm just worried about you know, the, the, the way that the, 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 the website, the Secular Dharma Net, um, is set up is just not conducive to to easy work. I, no. Every time I go into it, I'm just confused. Okay, what, what am I supposed to be doing here? That's and you're not, exactly. supposed to, you're not supposed to think that when, when you're no. going to a website. And no, indeed. Not, and I've seen that quite a few times. So, and I'm, you know, a fairly experienced, you know, computer guy. So, you know, I should be, you know, not, not be the one that sort of goes into, um, you know, um, software shop whenever I see new software. Um, but, uh, yeah, it's just just um, frustrating, frustrating. Um, no, absolutely. So that's fun. why we. That's what I'm saying. That's I think somehow we need something that isn't that is much more yeah. intuitive, a more, a much more. It's much clearer and understandable. But I don't know what mm -hmm. it is. I mean, I'm not a programmer. Well, well, that's why I, that's why I'm writing it. <laughs> yeah, but I, in the I meantime, there must be something in the yeah, meantime yeah. <laughs> that we could use that, that isn't perfect, but is um, a, better than what we've got. Yeah. Um, 
the, I mean, the, the one that I originally used, discourse.org, um, I mean, sort of, it, it was a good deal more solid than WordPress, of course, but it did have that sort of little quirks which sort of threw people a bit. Um, but it seemed to be a, you know, a, a, and that is a genuinely open, a much more genuinely open source project than, um, than WordPress, of course. So, you know, that, that is an alternative. Um, the question is, you know, how do you get it all set up? And then the problem with, with me is I'm logging into European websites is, you know, is a, is a lot of, you know, uh, the speed is noise there. The latent, the lot of latency is just, you know, slow in yeah. trying to operate on, on European websites. Uh, but, uh, but, you know, most, most people are there. So, you know, rather than getting up a, a poor web experience by having it on my server in Jakarta, you know, it's, uh, it's better off in a high speed location such as in Europe. But that makes a problem for me because it, it's just really slow going, um, especially when you're dealing with large media. But anyway, yeah, but I think there's lots of, I'll keep thinking about that. I think there's, uh, I'd really like to see that fixed if it's possible. But uh, I don't know what alternatives are. I mean, discourse.org is really the only viable alternative there is. And uh, uh, even that, uh, I think some people might find challenging. Was this course the one that you set it up on originally? Yes, that's when I started with, yes. I mean, that was okay for discourse. I mean, it was okay. It, it made sense in terms of you could respond to what somebody posted. But it didn't have, as far as I can remember, any way of making links between um, uh, re various resources. Titles or posts. Yeah, it, well, or, or as I said, just things like resources. So there wasn't a way that you could have um, the sorts of things that we've been talking about where you could pick up strands and link them together under a, um, a, a category with a, def with a very specific definition. And you could say, well, that's mm -hmm. where these things um, come into it. Didn't it? Didn't seem to be that type of. It was about discourse. It was about um, an exchange of ideas, not necessarily building towards a um, a taxonomy. But, but I just, I was just thinking that you know what you're you actually suggesting was you know hinting at a ta taxonomy. Yeah. Uh, you know, if you've got a system of tags, that means you've got a taxonomy of tags. Uh, you know, you've got some sort of formation, some sort of structure, some sort of you know, uh, you know, deliberate placement of things there rather than there. Or so you know, th there is an inferred taxonomy regardless, even even with tag systems. The question is, to, to, to what extent do you structure it? And in structuring that, are you in fact defining the uh, uh, the resources from which we should be drawing the data? Uh, well, it, you could make it as broad as possible. You could as broad enough to include everything that there could possibly be, because you could have something that said other. So that that would mean there is yeah. there is you know there. If you couldn't think of, but but I, I don't. There's no way that I would, and I'm sure any of us would want to uh, restrict the conversation. Mm -hmm. um, that doesn't mean that you can't have a taxonomy. Yeah, that's right. Um, you know that that you can it, it can include absolutely everything, but mm -hmm. it also needs a structure. It also, as I was saying before, you know, if you're if you're trying to progress towards something and you want to be creative in um, getting an idea, then you need to have lots of 
and a very wide range of resources in order to, to explore where the, you could be able to pick up things which you could make links between. Mm. And at the moment, we're sort of operating quite in a quite blind way um, and all through conversation where you could, you know, you, you recommend a book or I, you know, there's an mm -hmm. article here and something there so that we're picking up things and say, well, that's, that's sort of interesting. But if you wanted to widen this, you'd need mm -hmm. something which was not as ad hoc, something where yes. there was, you know, a link between things rather like when you go on to, um, these sites where they'll tell you, well, you know, the person who bought this also bought this. Uh, these yeah. are related things. And normally they're, they're hopeless because they are, um, God knows what they're for, but they, they don't have, they're not useful. Mm -hmm. But we want something that is useful, something where you've got somebody who's, who's read that and said, well, yeah, if you read there, there's some, that's just as you were saying, if you read this, there's something interesting in there. Or in this chapter, there's something there which is related to what you're, which related to what you're thinking about, which can either um, support or argue against um, your thinking. But it, it, whichever way, it clarifies the thinking, and and you become um, better equipped to be able to pursue the idea. Mm -hmm. But if we haven't, and also to be great, we need things that are all over the place. We need things that are very um, disparate so that we could say, mm -hmm. oh, well, that's a pot of information that I've not looked in. I wonder yeah. if there's something in there. But we have to have the pots. We have to have these categories yes. somehow in order yes. to be able to do the exploration. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. I, I was sort of just then thinking about, you know, my, my book list here is, is basically a, a book. It's just a, a media source. So that every entry is basically just one book or, or one audio book or, or one particular article. Um, so you know, if you had a you know a, you know a canonical list of those particular sources, then multiple people could you know refer to that in a you know in a very standard sort of way. Um, you know, either to to review it or to you know to or, or to see who else has read it, for example. Um, but you know, it would have to be obviously within a within a a smaller community that was actually already you know seeking Dharma, you know, looking for places so that that that, that, that that's yeah. where the Dharma might dwell. And so, because you know, it wouldn't be relevant if it just just anybody sort of came in, you know, with any any number of uh, ideas. Uh, if you had a you know a small small uh, dynamic focused sort of uh, uh, audience who were sort of uh, reading these 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 books, listening to these books, watching these particular types of videos, which are within a particular canonical list, uh, and then giving you know uh, ratings and 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 reviews and commentary. Uh, that, that refer to that to those works. Of course, you know there could be, and it could be any sort of work, you know, anything from a, you know, um, from some huge eight hundred page book to to a particular small article in a in a in a magazine. Uh, all of these various media's can communicate something, and if they have a particular reference, you know, from some you know, particular source. Uh, then there's a, a, a much easier way of interlinking them if there's a standardized way of actually referring to them. Uh, which is one reason why I wanted to try and make a, a standardized data version of, uh, of my book lists. Um, just because they're much easier, you know, they, can, they can be used like a database effectively and, and they can be shared and interchanged and, you know, and whatever. Yeah, there's still there's a bit of thinking to do it. How to do that within a you know within the contemporary forum software? I I'd, I'd be pretty skeptical that uh, that that would be possible. Maybe it, maybe it is. Um, just that the mechanisms just aren't really there. Um, not not in the off the shelf forum software.
Anyway, I'll, I'll be thinking some more about that. So. Okay, well, good luck with the thinking. Yeah. Yes, um, thank you. and you too. I, I'm going to better shove off because yeah. what is it? I just lost the time. Oh, it's in 29. Oh, just, just, I'll just mention that uh, my personal site, garydean.id, I'm, I'm actually, like I said, using that as a, a test base for a few ideas as to how you know, my eventual, you know, uh, what will eventually be a, a blog a multi-purpose, general-purpose blog software, uh, but, but uh, much, much simpler than, than what we're, we're dealt with at the moment. Um, anyway, I'm just, like I said, I'm using that as a test bed for, for, for what I'd really like to see people have. What, I, what I'd really like to see as much as possible, not uh, everybody, but you know, I'd li really like to see people have their own website. Uh, with you know the, the, their own sort of posts, their own sort of videos, their own comments and and uh, and things, and and from there, then distribute their their particular content to, to other platforms and and to other uh, common sites. So you know, that that's sort of the the objective. And like I said, I'm using this sort of a, just as a test bed, and it's very primitive at the moment. Uh, but but uh, it could be quite easily whipped into shape to become something that's just quite easy to use and quite easy to install and set up. Um, All right, well, that sounds good. It, in the process, giving people a good deal more autonomy and taking discourses out of out of the platforms and putting it back on the web. Okay. So, what was the name of yours again, Gary Dean? Uh, dot id. Dot id. Is that where yeah, I found the um, um, websites, the the uh, the, the um, videos? Bookless. No, the videos. Uh, yeah, um, I've I've got videos there as well. Yeah. No, the, the videos them. that I've been uploading. Oh no, well no, I haven't been doing them yet. I've only been doing my own stuff. But well, where well, where were they? they? What well, you've because I found them on one of your websites. Uh, probably on my YouTube channel. No. No, they were. Uh, but yeah, oh, oh no, I do have. I do refer to. I do actually bring in my YouTube media into my personal site, and that's where I comment about it. I don't comment really comment about it on on the YouTube channel. Yeah, but the what the four that I've just uploaded, I had to find on a website, and you gave me a website. Oh, that, oh that's just, that's my website. I just put them there so you can pick them up. Yeah, I'm saying, is that the same website you just gave me? Yes, yes. All right, right. If, I, if you pick them up, I'll delete them. Yeah, well, I've done I've done those four, as you can see. Okay, okay, uh, well, so I'll take delete them, off. them now. Yeah. yeah. Okay, Gary, all right, nice okay. to see you. All right, and hopefully we'll get too. the others in next week. Yes, I'll, we'll have to sort I'll, of be a little bit more forceful. I'll send them. you a reminder yeah. so that we're... <laughs> Oh, good. Good idea. Okay. <laughs> the moderator needs to be reminded to call the meeting. Good idea. Yeah. Okay, then. Cheers. Okay. See you then. See you later.